Yeah. Okay, let's resume the, the issue of the spin liquid. Okay, yesterday, in, in my yesterday's lectures, I, I uh, showed you uh, some experiments uh, which uh, 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 evidences the quantum spin liquid nature and uh, magnetic ordering uh, depending on the uh, degree of the frustration of the lattice. And uh, the materials, uh, two materials I showed, um, one is the uh, the formal triangle lattice, and the other one is the uh, nearly isotropic triangle lattice. And uh, the formal tri triangle lattice shows the queer magnetic ordering below uh, 25 or 26 Kelvin, uh, which is clearly uh, indicated by the splitting of the NML line, as I showed you yesterday. And uh, however, the nearly triangle lattice uh, that does not show any clear uh, splitting or for the for the change uh, of NMR spectra at low temperatures. So this is the uh, 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 an ambiguous uh, uh, evidence of the non-magnetic ordering and very probably uh, indication of the spin liquid. And uh, in conventional uh, uh, many body systems, the interaction uh, between the uh, uh, among the uh, ingredient uh, uh, leads to the, the some kind of order uh, in spin systems. The uh, the uh, usually the ferromagnetic or anti-ferromagnetic or ferromagnetic or spiral or anyway some ordering state uh, results, and which uh, is re regarded as a, some classical order. Um, and uh, the excitation from the ground state is ex uh, described by the, some some particles uh, uh, in in spin systems, the magnon. Uh, but uh, in spin liquid systems, uh, interaction is there, uh, and the very strong interaction uh, uh, works uh, uh, between these spins. Uh, however, in the absence of ordering, so what is the uh, uh, excitations? How do spin excitations grow? Uh, to uh, look into the, the nature of the uh, spin excitations, uh, the uh, uh, some dynamic measurements uh, is a very, very powerful probe uh, to know the, the excitations. So uh, the, this uh, uh, specific heat uh, results is, uh, is one of the most uh, striking results in spin liquid material. And left hand side uh, shows the uh, C over T, the so specific heat divided by temperature. Uh, as a function of t square. Uh, this is the conventional plot of the specific heat uh, of the metal. Um, and usually, the, the, this uh, intersection uh, uh, gives a, the, the uh, coefficient uh, of uh, electronic contribution to the specific heat, gamma term. Um, maybe you know the, the C. Whoa. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is needless to say, maybe uh, C equal gamma t plus beta t square. The electronic contribution, lattice contribution, C over t is gamma plus beta t square. Uh, so sorry, yeah. yeah. So uh, this gamma uh, is a uh, metallic state, it, it's uh, proportional to the density of states. So, uh, textbook says that the, uh, the ins in insulating materials, uh, this uh, the gamma term, uh, namely intersection, uh, should vanish. And uh, the, the 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 data uh, plotted in this figure is for uh, insulators. All of the materials are insulators, and antiferromagnetic uh, insulators uh, shows a vanishing gamma as expected. However, the spin liquid materials is this insulator. Uh, seems to show a finite gamma. And this group, uh, Osaka University group, uh, extended the measurements uh, down to lower and lower temperatures, uh, millikelvin range, and they confirmed that the, uh, this, uh, the gamma is a finite. Uh, roughly, uh, okay, I sh I'd like to show the exact values of the, uh, of the gamma. Next big graph. Anyway, uh, finite gamma. And uh, they also uh, observed, found that some anomaly 
and specific heat around uh, uh, 5 Kelvin or 6 Kelvin. This is a T-square. Uh, and but so uh, maybe uh, T equal uh, 6 or 7 Kelvin, some anomaly occurs. But uh, at present, uh, I do not uh, 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 enter the details of this, this uh, feature. OK, please take a look at this uh, one. Yes? Uh, yeah, these are TQ behaviors. And three dimensional, always material is three dimensional, uh, so the ordering is three dimensional. But um, maybe uh, uh, for these questions, the temperature dependence of the specific heat uh, maybe uh, asks the answer because in the two dimensional systems, the spin wave is a T square. And, but uh, in real materials, the, uh, 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 there is a magnetic anisotropy. In that case, always the activation activated. So uh, I think that the, the magnetic ordering occurs in these materials, uh, 20 Kelvin or 30 Kelvin. So in these temperature range regions, the, all of the magnetic excitation dies out. So uh, this temperature dependence is, uh, solely comes from the, the difference of the phonons. We think no spin waves. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. Due to the anisotropy of the no spin gaps, uh, it's uh, activated behaviors. In the system. Okay, um, uh, this is a comparison of the uh, uh, spin susceptibility and then specific heat gamma. Um, the gamma is uh, 13 millijoule. Uh, and the low temperature limit of the spin susceptibility is uh, roughly 3, uh, uh, 10 uh, to the fourth. OK. Um, the, the Wilson ratio uh, characterizes the, some, uh, the degree of the foam liquid. Um, for example, uh, OK, uh, this, uh, in, in free electron uh, gas, uh, the chi is, divided, uh, is expressed as uh, yes, uh, this is the power susceptibilities, and this is the uh, 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 free electron gamma values. Yeah, so uh, Rw Wilson ratio should be unity one m non-interacting electrons. But in, in usual uh, correlated electrons, the uh, this uh, susceptibility is uh, it's, uh, uh, generally enhanced uh, somewhat. Uh, uh, than the, the expected uh, uh, susceptibility uh, from the gamma body. So uh, in real materials, Rw, Wilson ratio, is uh, 1 or 2 or no 3 or 1 or 2. So this means the, this uh, spin liquid insulator uh, looks like a uh, metal because the Wilson ratio is, uh, is 1.6. It's a very, very conventional body for for film liquid bodies, but this is the insulator. Okay. So this is very striking uh, uh, results because the, uh, uh, despite of the, the insulating states, uh, it seems that there is uh, some uh, fermionic stuffs uh, are there uh, in these materials. So uh, okay, uh, they are the 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 Osaka University groups extended the, the measurements uh, then to the uh, very low temperatures, and this is the, the linear temperature dependence, and then finite the intersection appears. But at, at the lowest temperatures, uh, they, they encountered the, the, the abrupt enhancement of the specific key. This is due to the uh, nuclear short key uh, relaxation, uh, sh short key contributions, uh, because, because this material contains uh, copper ions. Copper is non magnetic and closed the shell, so no uh, vital law. Uh, and, and the electronic properties. However, uh, copper spins uh, is uh, 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 three or, 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 or halves. So this is, uh, uh, and the, this spins, uh, when this spins uh, or reside in the, uh, uh, the, the uh, field gradient situations, uh, the, it's a two level, the, this spins forms a two level, two level systems. So this is the short key, these copper spins. Nuclear spins uh, shows the short key uh, contributions. So this is the tail of the short key contributions. However, except the, 
this uh, lowest temperature region, uh, the, the, the behavior uh, seems like linear, and then this in interception uh, gives the uh, gamma value of uh, 13 or 14 millijoule. Uh, this value is not so large, but it's not so small. This is a very conventional value uh, uh, for uh, metal uh, in organic materials. So these values uh, cannot distinguish between the insulators and metal uh, as far as the magnitude uh, is concerned. And however, um, thermal conductivity uh, measurements uh, gives the contradictory uh, data, somewhat contradictory data. Uh, they measure the summer, the Kyoto University group uh, uh, measured the summer conductivity uh, down to uh, 30 or 40, no, 10 millijoule, uh, 10 millikelvin also. No, no, no. Several 10 millikelvin, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, they observed the copper over T, copper over T plotted as a, uh, T squares. Uh, this plot uh, is the equivalence of the, uh, this plot and specific heat. And uh, what they uh, found is this, uh, the tendency of the data uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as uh, toward the, the, the zero vanishing values in couple of T. And this is suggestive of the uh, finite uh, excitation gap. And from uh, this data, they deduced, uh, uh, they obtained that the gap is a 0.4 or 0.5 Kelvin. Um, anyway, this is very, very small uh, because the exchange interaction is a 250 Kelvin in this material. So uh, this gap is three orders of, of magnitude smaller. So um, even now, uh, this uh, uh, contradiction uh, between the uh, specific heat data and thermal conductivity data uh, 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 d don't find agreement. Uh, but anyway, uh, what at present, uh, what we can say is uh, this, uh, uh, this material is uh, gapless or marginally gapped. So this is a tiny gap, if any, uh, yes. Uh, field dependence, uh, and uh, this uh, specific heat uh, does not show any field dependence up to a Tesla. So, and they uh, maybe reported some field dependence at higher temperatures. So they speculated some uh, 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 about uh, some contribution from the bison or something like this, but I, I'm not sure at high temperatures. This is the sample dependence. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, you're asking this field dependence? I don't know. Yes, uh, yes, uh, the data at zero Tesla, and then this, yeah, copper is enhanced, but yeah, a little bit enhanced, yeah. But I don't know, but uh, from in specific heat, uh, uh, the, the, there is no field dependence. So, in this, even in this respect, is uh, mm, no agreement. But I have to say that this is a specific heat is a purely thermodynamic quantity, and thermal conductivity is a uh, uh, thermodynamic uh, in some sense. But in, in in other sense, it's a transport. So uh, the under the magnetic field, how to uh, uh, some energy uh, transport uh, is uh, depending on the uh, the sample the uh, disorder. The the depends on the degree of the disorder or something like this. So this uh, sample conductivity is very sensitive to such a kind of the sample situation. Uh, but I'm not sure. But anyway, this is the uh, 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 some sort of the transport measurement. So. But anyway, um, this contradiction. But uh, from a theoretical point of view, uh, this experimental data, uh, the finite gamma is very clear, uh, has a clear consequence that the uh, some fermionic, uh, in independent fermionic stuffs are there. But uh, from the theoretical point of view, uh, U1 spin liquid, the theoretical predictions is a, a C over T uh, should be proportional to the, the this, this uh, curious 
uh, 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 Pavalo, and a cup of tea is also curious Pavalo. So this means that the, uh, uh, even this uh, strange and then uh, the data data uh, suggestively filming filming stuffs. Um, this is still uh, con uh, it's inconsistent with the this U1 uh, gauge U1 uh, spin liquid. So some other spin liquid uh, may be possible. And one um, possibility is the the the, the Anderson localization of spinons. Um, uh, it's, but I'm not sure. Anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, the many, many contradiction. Uh, one is between specific heat and thermal conductivity, and the other one is the exper between experiments at the theory. So, uh, completely open questions. So, uh, this is a, uh, the uh, uh, problem uh, which you should challenge. Okay, um, I'd like to show uh, you the, the, the relevant uh, related results. In, in analogous materials, and this is the uh, different. Uh, this materials uh, consisting of different molecules of pallad palladium DMIT2. Uh, you can forget about this uh, uh, the details of molecules. Anyway, the uh, this palladium DMIT2 uh, is a one molecule uh, like this. It's a planar molecule uh, 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 like the BEDTTTF, abbreviated to ET. Uh, as I talked so far. So, uh, this is layered structures. This palladium DMIT2 uh, forms a one monolayer, and uh, A is insulating layers, and there's a cation. Uh, many kinds of the cationic uh, molecular species residing in the insulating layers. So, the layered structures, uh, uh, like the BDTTF materials, and insulating, uh, conducting, insulating, conducting. But this material is a mod insulator, so uh, the the uh, the whole system behaves like uh, an insulator. And um, this is the the uh, imprint structure of the molecule. And this uh, palladium DMIT two molecule forms a strong dimer, like uh, the materials I I talked uh, yesterday. Um, this uh, strong dimer forms a two-dimensional network, and the transfer integrals roughly characterize uh, the transfer integrals. Uh, uh, two kinds of transfer integrals are there: uh, t prime and t, so anisotropic triangularities. And the very good points of these materials uh, is that uh, uh, the materials has a uh, very fine tuning, fi finely tuned parameters for. Uh, or the anisotropies. So uh, this uh, methyl uh, phosphorus, methyl uh, arsenide, and, and many, many, many um, cationic uh, molecules are there. And this anisotropy, T prime, prime over T, is controlled uh, uh, by this species, molecular species. And uh, if uh, this cation are residing in, in, in these insulating layers, uh, the, the T prime over T is 0.6 something, uh, the less frustrations. Frustration is weak. And, and uh, you can change the, the cationic species from here and here. And this material is acyl um, methyl 3 antimony. Uh, this uh, molecule is uh, residing. Uh, this uh, these insulating layers and the, this materials uh, shows a spin liquid uh, behavior. So the the nail order. This is the nail temperature. Nail temperature and the degree of frustration has a very clear correlations. The as the frustration is, strong, is stronger, the nail uh, temperatures is suppressed, and then spin liquid uh, occurs in these regions. So, uh, the thermal conductivity and, and the specific heat measurements uh, shows uh, very consistent uh, results as far as this material is concerned. The left side uh, figure shows the specific heat. Uh, this is the charge order of the insulators, uh, which shows uh, the vanishing, vanishingly small 
uh, gamma as expected, but this is spin linked material, um, has uh, the finite inter intersection. And um, the right hand side figure shows the, the, the uh, thermal conductivity uh, divided by temperatures. Uh, this is also the, the this uh, non spin liquid materials uh, shows the vanishing capability, but uh, the spin liquid materials is has our finite values at zero temperatures. So for these materials, the specific heat measurements and then thermal conductivity measurements are uh, happy uh, to each other, and so uh, the, the people believe that in these materials. Uh, this material is, is a gapless uh, spin liquid. Uh, there is no uh, experimental data showing the finite gap in these materials. And uh, interestingly, uh, we can uh, compare the, the uh, specific heat, uh, gamma, and then uh, uh, spin susceptibility uh, at low temperature limit the here, here. So uh, you can calculate uh, Wilson ratio and the Wilson ratio is 1.6, uh, nearly exactly the same value of the, the previous spin liquid materials. So two spin liquid materials shows nearly exactly the same Wilson ratio. So uh, I, we think that the two materials uh, carry the similar kind of spin liquid. I think. Okay, um, there is a. Uh, Several, there are several uh, mysterious uh, results, uh, and, uh, but uh, here I'd like to show you one uh, key result, uh, which is still open uh, and questions, uh, gives open questions. Uh, that is the, uh, the anomaly at occurred, that occurs at uh, 6 Kelvin. We call this uh, 6 Kelvin anomaly, and around 6 Kelvin, uh, or, or 5 Kelvin, 7 Kelvin, in, in this temperature range, uh, uh, various anomalies occur um, in various uh, quantities. And for example, specific heat is a broad hand for course, and thermal conductivity uh, shows some kink in this temperature range. This is a different sample, so sample dependent. However, uh, uh, the, 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 the magnitude is different, but around 6 Kelvin, some kink occurs for both. Uh, samples. And annual relaxation rate uh, shows a steep decrease around these temperatures. And this is the uh, uh, thermal expansivity, uh, which is also thermal, uh, some dynamic quantities. Um, uh, this uh, shows uh, some anomalies around 6 Kelvin. And it, this anomaly uh, seems uh, very sharp. However, uh, in some of the expansion coefficient, if the, uh, the transition is of the second order, uh, in that case, a very sharp peak. So uh, they say uh, this is very, very broad, uh, the signature of the very broad transitions. And uh, this uh, nature of the transition uh, is broad in other materials. When, uh, you, you can see the, this NML anomaly is not a clear anomaly, it's uh, some, some crossover here to here. And uh, also, ultrasonic uh, velocity shows uh, some softening of the lattice around 6 Kelvin. So uh, something happens uh, around 6 Kelvin. And uh, um, the, uh, the origin of this anomaly is completely open, uh, but uh, the, some theoretical uh, uh, suggestions uh, may be relevant to these uh, anomalies. Um, among them, the, the instability of, of the spin on the surface um, is uh, uh, one uh, conceivable candidates. As I uh, explained yesterday, the degenerate um, uh, system uh, with Fermi surface is unstable uh, because the degeneracy is in, in inherently uh, very, very weak against any perturbations. So if the spin on Fermi surface is formed, that this spin on Fermi surface is likely uh, or, or may be uh, destroyed by some other uh, perturbation or interaction between the uh, constituent particles. So uh, several uh, the firm surface, spin on firm surface instabilities is suggested. And uh, uh, one like a superconductivity. Uh, it's, uh, so uh, please uh, 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 compare the two results 
Um, and this uh, is a spin liquid material. Uh, and this is the superconducting material. And 10 Kelvin superconductor. Can you distinguish between the two data? It's a very similar. And please take a look, look at the, this uh, thermal conductivity. This is a spin liquid material, some Kinko cruise. And some Kinko cruise, and this is the spin liquid. Uh, this is a superconductor. This is a spin liquid insulator. So, um, apart from the charge degrees of freedom, the other degrees of freedom uh, seems uh, uh, to uh, behave uh, like similar um, in spin liquid material and in superconductors. So, um, I think that the, uh, such a kind of the um, spin on thermal soft instability is one of the conceivable. Yes? Does that compare? I mean, what about the heat capacity of that? Yeah, that's a, that, is, that is a very uh, uh, difficult one because the, um, the at low temperatures, the phonon contribution dies and dies, and then electron contribution it shows up. However, at high temperatures, maybe around 10 Kelvin, uh, 10 Kelvin is a TC is 10 Kelvin, that gets uh, maybe 99% of the specific heat uh, uh, coming from the phonon, phononic part. So it's uh, some anomaly occurs uh, in, in, in superconductivity, is that some anomaly occurs. And then, however, yeah, yeah. This can be uh, some origin of the, uh, some spin of the, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not, because uh, the, the temperature is uh, rather lower, 6 Kelvin. And this is the uh, uh, delta C uh, divided by temperature. So the whole specific heat is very huge, and then lattice part is subtracted. And the, such a broad uh, uh, shoulder results. But in, in, in this sense, the, this shape and then the, the anomaly uh, associated with the superconductor transition mm, looks uh, similar, yeah, like this. But we cannot compare the, in detail the, the two behaviors. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, is there a measure of how large spin lattice coupling is in terms of How to measure the spin lattice coupling? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, this one. Ah, this one. Yeah, I mean, it seems that this anomaly is showing up pretty commonly there, so. Um. I'm not sure. Uh, um, I don't know how to how to extract the information on the spin that's coupling. But anyway, um, yeah, this uh, anomaly occurs. It's a uh, it's electronic and the spin and lattice, so there is a coupling between this. But I, I don't know the uh, how to. Uh, or, or characterize it quantitatively. But anyway, some coupling is there, yeah. Okay, um, the uh, other uh, some dynamic considerations uh, is possible uh, by uh, watching uh, carefully the, the phase diagram. Um, and uh, that's all about the, the Clausius clapellum. The if the transition is first order uh, transition, in that case, uh, this is the plane, temperature and pressure, for example. And uh, this is the Clausius Clausius clapellum relations. Uh, the this slope, the T, uh, the variable TP, the derivative, uh, the slope is uh, is equal to the the difference of the volume across the boundary divided by the difference of the entropy. Um, across the boundary. And uh, if the slope is uh, like this, it's a positive. Uh, in that case, uh, uh, it's, uh, this is positive. And volume difference is always positive because uh, under pressure, volume uh, necessarily shrinks. So this uh, Va minus Vb is always positive. So this is, uh, so if the, this slope uh, you have, uh, the SA minus SB should be positive. So entropy. A phase, entropy of the A phase is greater than that of B phase. Uh, or if the, the slope is negative, the, 
the reverse situation, uh, opposite situation occurs. Um, in, the, in this case, the, a, the entropy of A phase is smaller than the derivative B phase. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the uh, uh, phase diagrams of the two materials. Uh, one is the anti-ferromagnetic uh, motor insulator, the, one, the other one is the spin liquid motor insulators. So you see uh, a very contrasting um, uh, phase boundary, uh, which uh, shows a negative slope uh, in anti-ferromagnetic case and then positive slope in uh, spin liquid case. So uh, even in anti-ferromagnetic case, at high temperatures, the slope is positive. So uh, okay. Positive uh, slope means that the entropy of the A phase is greater than the B phase. It's a very uh, 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 reasonable because uh, in the spin liquid materials, the spins are very alive. It's a vital, though, so the spin uh, entropy is very high compared with the uh, the, the from the generate metal uh, from liquid and. But uh, in the anti-ferromagnetic case, the, the slope is reversed. Why? And this is the anti-ferromagnetic ordering temperature uh, here. But even at ordered temperatures, the short range ordering occurs. Uh, this is uh, very clear because the, uh, around uh, the, this uh, nail ordered, there is no specific heat anomalies. Uh, this means that the, the short range order uh, is developed at higher temperatures. So this reverse uh, means that the spin entropy is high at high temperatures because the, all of the spins are paramagnet, paramagnetic. And however, at low temperatures, short range orders, the spin entropy is gradually dying and die out and die. And then the, the entropy of the, this A phase uh, is smaller than this one, the, the metallic one. So it's a very, very uh, um, reasonable. And uh, some of you know the, the phase diagram of V2O3. It's a very famous mode transition system. And in V2O3, the case, in, in that case, the, this phase boundary is like this. Yeah. Pressure and temperature, first order tem temperatures, and metal. And, and this is the insulator, promagnetic insulators, and like this, this AF. And this is three-dimensional materials. There is a no, uh, no prominent short-range fluctuations. So the once antiferromagnetic always occurs, that the entropy balance is suddenly de reversed. This is a three-dimensional case. But in a case of very strongly uh, two-dimensional, highly two-dimensional, so at high temperatures, magnetic order like this, but still high, high temperatures, it's a short range order, so like this. This is the uh, explanation of this uh, phase diagram. Okay. And uh, so uh, from uh, the phase diagram, uh, we can guess uh, the, uh, how the entropy uh, dies out uh, at low temperatures. And let me emphasize that in, in spin liquid materials, the spin entropy is uh, still alive at low temperature. However, uh, please take a look at the, the low temperature behaviors. This slope is gradually uh, 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 changes in the tangential um, at low temperatures. So we proceeded to the de uh, detailed uh, uh, the experiments uh, to determine the precise uh, phase boundaries here. It's a lot of the same material. Oh, so the material is this one, the spin liquid material. The temperature is very low and precisely determined. This is the MOT insulator. It's a spin liquid, MOT in, spin liquid insulator. And this is metal. And superconductivity occurs below 3 Kelvin. And this uh, superconductivity neighboring neighbors the uh, uh, spin liquid. Okay. From this uh, uh, boundary, uh, this red curve is a fitting of the boundaries. So from this uh, uh, slope, uh, by using these relations, uh, you can get the, the entropy difference as a function of temperatures. 
uh, you see, uh, around 6 or 7 kelvins, the entropy balance is reversed. At higher temperatures, the spin entropy of the spin liquid is higher than the film liquid. However, uh, below uh, these temperatures, this, the entropy of the spin liquid is smaller than the, this metallic uh, film liquid. So it may suggest that some uh, less uh, uh, entropy state uh, uh, is uh, stabilized at low temperatures. OK, so uh, this is the entropy difference. And uh, assuming the, uh, the, the entropy in the metallic states are like this, the gamma t, and gamma is uh, 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 inferred uh, from the uh, uh, spin susceptibilities under pressures um, uh, by using the, the Wilson ratio of 1. Um, uh, in the metallic state uh, of these primary materials, um, many materials show the uh, Wilson ratio of 1 in the metallic state. So uh, the gamma is guessed uh, to be uh, 27 or 28 millijoule in this material. So uh, this is the, uh, the inferred uh, spin entropy of the spin liquid. Okay? Um, this is the, uh, this around 5 kelvin or 6 kelvin, some uh, uh, better steep increase occurs. So something happens here. So, uh, but uh, to deduce, uh, to obtain the, the entropies, uh, we have to know the, the difference of the volume, delta V. But we don't know delta V. So delta V, uh, V is uh, parameters. And we uh, calculated several, uh, the, the, the entropy for several values of V. Um, uh, it's a very difficult to see the one something and two three and ten to the minus uh, eight something. But um, if uh, we assume the three, uh, this uh, uh, these values as as uh, delta v, in that case the, the resultant spin entropy shows a peak. This is unphysical. Uh, even uh, even uh, uh, by using the the second values, it's a it's a uh, it's a tendency. Uh, it's a, uh, entropy uh, tends to form a peak, so unphysical. So I think that this uh, uh, blue curve uh, data uh, well makes sense. Um, so the this is the uh, tentatively obtained uh, temperature dependence of the spin entropy of the spin liquid. I think yes. Uh, this is resistivity. Uh, below 3 Kelvin, this is a superconductivity. So we cannot uh, clearly determine uh, the phase boundary because, uh, um, as you say, some sort of superconductivity occurs, and this is some percolative uh, superconductivity uh, affects this insulating, uh, the, the behavior of the insulating phase. So we cannot uh, clearly determine in below 3 Kelvin. This is experimental. Uh, uh, restriction. Okay, uh, more interesting data is the okay uh, the evolution of the uh, the behavior of the charge degrees of freedom and the spin degrees of freedom. Um, the right hand side figure shows the uh, evolution and the change of the uh, temperature dependence of the theory. Um, okay, uh, this is the uh, uh, ambient pressure data is insulating. The many decades. Okay, uh, for example, uh, 85 uh, megapascal uh, here, the spin liquid insulator. And along these lines, the resistivity behaves like this. Uh, sorry, like this. Very good insulator. Okay, and at this pressure, the enamel relaxation rate, 1 over T1, 1 over T1 probes the spin fluctuations as I explained yesterday. And one of the T1 behaves like this, the green symbol. OK, green symbol like this. OK, uh, along this line, uh, it's uh, at high temperatures is an insulator. But at low temperatures, uh, the uh, system enters into the metallic states. So uh, this uh, corresponds to maybe, maybe, maybe like this. Yeah. So very huge difference. 
However, in spin degrees of freedom, there is no qualitative difference. Okay? For example, uh, if you look at the, the, the data above 3 Kelvin, there is no qualitative difference. The gradual change. Uh, this is a Fermi, oh, sorry. Um, this is a Coringa relations here, metallic state. It's a Coringa relations. And the Coringa level is gradually lifted. And this uh, at lower pressures. Okay? So, um, in particular, in this temperature range, this change is very smooth. Uh, this is the uh, paramagnetic state and then crossover to the firm liquid state here. So, even in these regions, such a kind of the crossover seems to occur. So, this is my tentative opinion. And in charge degrees freedom, it's a localized and then metal film liquid. But in spin degrees freedom, um, maybe uh, phenomenic behaviors are uh, always in the phase diagram, I think. So um, these behaviors uh, is a very unpublished, unpublished data, and then it's a tentative uh, preliminary data. But I think that this is a uh, uh, very possible indication of the uh, existence of the spinon, uh, fermionic spinons in these materials. Very clear contrast between the charge degrees of freedom and spin degrees of freedom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I yesterday uh, uh, explained something about that. Um, uh, spin susceptibility uh, uh, shows the uh, like this. Uh, shows the behavior like this and T and spin susceptibilities and so like this. And um, this data is well reproduced by the triangle lattice Heisenberg model. And this means that it, uh, uh, it's uh, at high temperatures, in, in maybe around this temperature range, at high temperatures, it may be uh, the short range, 120 degrees uh, spin configurations are fluctuating. But at low temperatures, and maybe the, the 120 uh, degrees of ordered state is, does not stabilize, is not stabilized. So some uh, uh, no ordering, so some fermionic state occurs. So uh, maybe there should be uh, some crossover between this high temperature state and the low temperature fermionic state. So uh, this peak, uh, uh, this is can this can be a crossover between these uh, uh, bosonic excitations to the fermionic excitations. This is a uh, guess. Okay, um, this is the low temperature behaviors. And uh, additionally, uh, the interesting behaviors um, occurs at high temperatures. Um, this is the phase diagram in these regions. So if you uh, look at the high temperature uh, regions of this phase diagram, yeah, extended uh, up to 100 Kelvin, uh, there is a very interesting um, crossover regions, uh, which is uh, indicated by the color, a range of the colors. And this is the quantum critical uh, behavior. Uh, it's shown in these regions. So I'd like to uh, uh, show some, uh, some uh, results uh, about uh, concerning um, this uh, finding. OK. Um, OK. So uh, what we did is the the resistivity behaviors in these regions as functions of temperature and pressures uh, are scaled in a quantum critical manner. Okay, uh, the, what we did is very simple. Um, temperature is fixed, for example, here. And then pressure is swept. And resistivity is measured. This measurement is repeated uh, at different temperatures fixed. 
Okay, the obtained uh, results is like this. Um, for example, uh, uh, at 25 kelvins, the resistivity is insulating and gradually changes. This is the high temperature data. So there is no first order transition. It's a cross order region. So the change from the insulating state to the metallic film liquid state is smooth. It's very continuous. And okay. And uh, this inflection point is, uh, 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 is determined to be the crossover uh, point, uh, which is uh, rationalized by the, some DMFT calculations, um, uh, which I, I uh, showed you later. Then, the, all of the experimental data uh, is uh, reduced uh, uh, to have the common inflection point. Yeah. So, so pressure scale is shifted. Then the this horizontal scales is horizontal data. Uh, the data uh, is is scaled in horizontal directions by multiplied by uh, a factor. Uh, the factor depends on the temperatures, the different temperatures. So all of the experimental data collapsed uh, into this uh, universal curve, and uh, so uh, to obtain this uh, or the universal curve. The, uh, the data at different temperatures uh, has a different correction factors. The different correction factors uh, is, follows this uh, uh, scaling factors. In this case, uh, Z nu, Z nu is 0 0.6. It's an a, a, a exponent of the quantum curricular scaling. This is a quantum curricular scaling. And, yes? Did you scale it with T or T? No, T. It's a T, no T minus T C. Okay, so uh, if you take the, the, the T over T0, T0 is a uh, uh, reduced temperatures, uh, the, this data uh, collapses to the two uh, uh, branches. This is experimental data, not the calculation. The, all of the experimental data collapses to the uh, two uh, branches. This is an insulating branch. This is a metallic branch. And and these uh, universal curves have uh, uh, nearly perfect uh, mirror reflections. And this is the, the very uh, uh, characteristics of the quantum critical behaviors. So this uh, shows the, uh, the quantum critical uh, 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 characteristics uh, appears, uh, uh, emerges, uh, and this uh, in the high temperature region of this mode transition. And uh, Yes, and this is color plot. The color means that the, the value of the, uh, the uh, reduced uh, uh, resistance, the normalized resistance. So this uh, colored region is a quantum critical region. This blue region is a very good insulator. It's a metal region here. Okay. If uh, this uh, rhythm line, the crossover line, is converted to the vertical line, so the uh, this phase diagram looks like this one. It's a nearly perfect uh, mirror reflections, uh, as expected M, uh, quantum critical transport. And we, this behavior is not specific to the spin liquid materials. This high temperature behavior uh, is commonly seen in other mode transition systems. We uh, examined uh, the behaviors for different materials and with uh, having different ground states. Uh, yeah, these materials and the other materials, uh, these materials is the anti-ferromagnetic insulator and the superconductivity. And these materials shows the, in the insulating layers in the insulating phase in the spin liquid and the metal, no superconductivity. So different uh, set of ground states appears in different materials. However, the scaling is, uh, is um, nearly, con nearly common, nearly uh, the same. And the data is missing here it, because this is uh, located in the very uh, close to the mode tra transition boundary. So we cannot access the negative pressures. So data is missing here. But anyway, all of the materials uh, shows uh, uh, nearly the same uh, quantum critical behaviors. And the Z new value, the uh, exponent, uh, for three materials, 
are located around here, uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. Uh, okay, this material is Z new, uh, 0.61. Lab roughly saying that six, uh, point 0.6 plus minus point 0.1. But I'm not sure this difference is that um, uh, makes sense or not. Uh, it's a, it, may be, it, it is likely that this difference is an experimental error. But anyway, this is a comparison of experimental, uh, experimentally determined the Z new values and some series. And the continuous mode transition and the emphatic calculations uh, predicts the, the similar values. Okay, um, uh, okay. This let let summarize uh, the the this part. Um, this is a uh, uh, comparison of the phase diagram of the spin liquid material and then the antifilm materials. And the important point is that at high temperatures, the uh, different materials uh, seems to show the very universal behaviors. There is no uh, difference at high temperatures. However, at low temperatures, the detail of the systems is reflected in the behaviors. Uh, the, uh, uh, namely, the degree of the frustration of the lattice. So spin liquid appears here, antifilm magnetic appears here, but the TC is lower in this case, but in, infra in less frustrated case, TC is higher, 3 Kelvin and 10 Kelvin. And uh, gap or preformed cube appear appears in this material, but it's not. So, very uh, different behaviors appears at low energy scale, uh, uh, reflecting the details of the system. But at high temperatures, yes? What is the nature of this critical? Critical, you, you mean this one? The, the critical end point. Yeah, here and here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is the uh, usually expected in the uh, phase for the phase transitions without similar breaking. And the, the phase transition without similar breaking should be the first order of crossover, uh, likely gas liquid transitions. So this uh, critical, uh, emergence of a critical end point is a very so natural consequence. Yeah, that's a good point. It's uh, controversial. It's, uh, uh, it, yes. Uh, gas liquid critical, uh, the universal the gas liquid transition has the same, belongs to the same universal equation as so Ising. Yeah. But the, uh, we uh, examine, we determine the exponent, but the different. But still controversial. Some other groups uh, reported that the critical exponent is exactly the same as the gas liquid transition. So it's a controversial, I guess. Yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we uh, determine, also determined that the, the uh, this uh, T minus TC, but the, uh, the, in this temperature range, the resistivity is uh, scaling, but at high temperatures, the critical TC is, uh, in this case, uh, 20 or 15 Kelvin, so uh, the data is also scaled if we use T minus TC instead of T. But at low temperature region, the scaling is failed. Rather, uh, rather than T minus TC, the T, uh, scales the data. That is a feeling. But I, we cannot say definitely um, uh, T minus TC scaling is not ruled out or not, it's, uh, it's not definitely answered. Okay, but this is experimental data, but uh, our experiments were motivated by the, the theoretical studies uh, conducted by the uh, Brad Dobro at um, Tarahashi. Um, they uh, uh, similar and calculated uh, the, the uh, conductivity uh, using the DMFT uh, framework. And this is a very long phase diagram uh, uh, deduced from the uh, DMFT at first order transition line and critical point here. And uh, in these regions, they uh, calculated the resistivity, and the resistivity uh, follows the, the quantum critical scaling. That is a suggestion, theoretical suggestion. And later, uh, we examined uh, the behavior in real materials, and we obtained the results, uh, which I explained. Uh, OK. And uh, the, important, the, the physics behind this quantum criticality uh, uh, is like this, I think. 
Um, and the very famous uh, system uh, that shows the uh, quantum critical behavior is the heavy fermion uh, systems. And in this case, uh, the RKKY and the Kondo are competing. And uh, this uh, competition between the, the two interactions gives a uh, quantum critical uh, behaviors uh, from the nail or the, and then heavy fermion systems. But in a case, uh, it's very analogous to the Kondo uh, systems. Uh, and in the MOT systems, the computing energy scales is a uh, kinetic energies characterized by the band widths and on-site cooler interactions. Both energy scales are several thousand Kelvin. Okay? And in, in condo systems, the condo and RKKY. And in this, uh, in the condo case, is the parameter is a J, the hybrid, hybridization, but in this case, the bandwidth, the transfer integral, they are closely connected. So, however, in our case, the, in, in the condo case, it's uh, the, in different from the condo case. In our case, uh, the mode transition uh, is not associated with the similarly breaking. So, similarly is perturbed. So, uh, as you say, that the first order transition will cross over. And first order transition occurred uh, at low temperatures. However, the first order transition has the very low critical point, end point, 20 Kelvin. But competing energy is 5,000 Kelvin. Very huge energy scale. So why not quantum critical behaviors uh, even and first order transition systems? And in reality, indeed, we observed quantum critical behavior in this. So uh, we think that the uh, quantum transition uh, is not a necessary condition for observing the quantum critical behaviors, even uh, when the, the transition is of first order, uh, the this critical end point, if the critical end point and then competing energy has a very different the intermediate energy, namely you know, at high energy scales, system can behave like quantum critical system. Okay. Yes. You were showing data up to about hundred kilometers. Yeah. Are you you're asking that at, what about at higher temperatures? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we measure at high temperatures. So the scaling fails at maybe 120, above 120 Kelvin. So what I see that the, at high temperatures, the formal contribution is huge. So um, I, uh, we guess that the, this uh, uh, the, uh, the fail of the scaling is due to the, some formal contribution. Anyway, results. Uh, does not follow the scaling at above 120 Kelvin. Okay. So um, I'd like to show you uh, the uh, another route to the spin liquid. Um, frustration of the lattice is very important to uh, obtain to have a, a spin liquid or frustrated magnetism. However, um, disorder. Uh, it plays a very interesting role uh, in, in generating the, the spin liquid materials. So I call it the quantum disorder by quenched disorder. Okay, um, again, uh, let me show that the two uh, the animal data of the two materials. One is uh, anti ferromagnetic order. uh, ordering, of course, and the other one is uh, spin liquid. Uh, we can uh, convert this material to this material by introducing this solar. Okay? What we did is X-ray radiations. And, okay, uh, we irradiated X-ray to these materials, classically ordered state. And like this. And uh, by uh, examining uh, optical measurements, uh, what occurs under X-ray radiation, uh, is the some break breakup of the some, some atomic arrangement or chemical bonding in the insulating layers, and this is the uh, optical measurements, um, namely the infrared spectra uh, of the some stretching mode in the insulating layers. So in the insulating layers and the ET molecules, and as the the irradiation 
is increased, the, the, the time of realization is increased, the, this uh, ET molecule does not show any change in the intensity of the, the absorption of the stretching mode. However, uh, this uh, CN stretching mode, the, this is the anion, the insulating layers. Yeah. The peak is decreased. This means some, some um, leakage of, or, or destroy of this chemical bonding. So uh, by x radiations, the, some this sort of occurs in this uh, in, in, in insulating layers. However, uh, susceptibility, spin susceptibility does not show any Q return. If uh, uh, the sample contains some defect, uh, it's a conventional defect, in that case, uh, the magnetic susceptibility should show Curie-like behavior at low temperatures. However, no Curie-like behaviors. Oh, sorry. So this means uh, the no uh, orphan spins are there. No impurity spins are there. The all of the spins are strongly interacting. No free spins. And disordered. OK, uh, this is the NMR data. Um, this uh, is the NMR spectra before X ray radiations. And after radiations, the NMR spectra shows no change uh, down to 340 millikelvin, 0.3 millikelvin. This is the, uh, the spectra. Uh, superposed. All of the spectra nearly the same. So this means uh, before extra irradiations, the NMR spectra shows a clear splitting, the magnetic ordering, but this magnetic ordering is completely gone by inducing, introducing uh, disorder to the system. It's a very curious uh, and interesting material, interesting feature. And this is the NMR relaxation rate. Okay. Um, before irradiations, uh, the one over T1 shows a sharp peak. This is the clear uh, manifestation of the antiferromagnetic ordering. Because at high temperature, spins are fluctuating. But when the spins are ordered, in that case, the, the motion of the spins are restricted. So only the spin wave or some, some kind of restricted, uh, only, the, only the restricted uh, uh, spin excitation. So this shows that NMR relaxation rate shows a very sharp peak around magnetic ordering. But this peak is gone after the X-ray radiations. And the temperature dependence of T1 is proportional to T, uh, the square root of the temperature. This temperature dependence resembles that the, the, the that of the uh, pristine spin liquid. So we think that the spin liquid is generated from the classical magnet by introducing this sort of However, uh, we have to uh, pay attention to the charge degrees of freedom. Um, this is the insulator. However, under, uh, after the X-ray radiations, the temperature dependence of resistivity is changed from the gapped behavior to the gapless behaviors. And this temperature dependence is very, very weak temperature dependence, still insulating. And this temperature dependence is well uh, reproduced by the variable range hopping. This means that it's rating, but very, very disordered in rating state. So uh, the, the, this state uh, is regarded as a Mott Anderson insulator. Mott insulator, but a very serious disorder uh, is introduced. Uh, in such a case, the gap is collapsed and very disordered Mott Anderson insulator, where the interaction and disorder uh, plays uh, uh, similar roles. And localizing electrons. So why uh, in such a situation, uh, in such a situation, why spin liquid-like behavior is stabilized? And this is a guess. Um, uh, one point is, OK, that's maybe spin liquid resides just behind the frustrated antifilm magnet. As a, this classical uh, ordered state in copper curling material, it's a deformed triangle. It's a ground state is antifilament. However, maybe spin liquid is maybe behind uh, residing, is residing uh, behind the, the antifilament or ordered state. Maybe that is one uh, conceivable uh, situation. The second one is that, 
uh, very, this is a very interesting uh, to me, uh, interesting suggestions uh, uh, from theoretical uh, point of view. Um, our guess is a spill liquid is maybe ubiquitous in Mott Anderson insulators because uh, this is a wave function, cutting over the wave function. In the Mott Anderson insulators, the wave function, one year like wave function, is very, very deformed. And the spin spin interaction, very, very complicated, I think. In such a situations, why not spill liquid behaviors? But our observation suggests that in these situations, the charge uh, are frozen in a glassy manner. However, spin can mobile uh, as a mobile spinners. And such a situation, such a, uh, a suggestion was made in theoretical works uh, by two uh, groups. So uh, I speculate that spin liquid is very ubiquitous in Mott Anderson localization, localized states. So we are now uh, doing uh, uh, such a kind of experiments in other Mott Anderson insulators. Okay, um, next, uh, uh, doping a spin liquid. The, yeah, spin liquid we have, probably the, we have the spin liquid candidate um, in organic materials. But uh, organic materials are not good at being doped. Uh, the doping is a very effective uh, method in um, high temperature superconductivity or transition metal oxides uh, because the transition metal oxides uh, easily accommodate alien atoms with different balance. However, organic materials uh, dislike that alien uh, species with different balances. So that is a main reason why the doping in organic materials uh, is, is not successful. However, uh, there is a exceptional materials we have. And that is this one, um, the copper type materials, the similar structures. The, however, the different is the, in, in the, the anion species in the insulating species. Mercury 2.89, bromine 8. It's a, a non-stoichiometric materials. It's a very, very funny. The, we synthesize these materials and characterize this content. Always the mercury content is 2.89. So this is not accidental. This has a very good reason. Because the mercury is a very, very uh, strange element. And in compounds, mercury often forms its own periodicities in commensurate with other hosting radius. And such a situation occurs. So this, uh, the missing content, for example, 0.11, is not a defect. Mercury forms an incommensurate superlattice uh, in the insulating layers. So, this 0.11, this missing content uh, serves uh, as whole doping. So 11% whole doped in the mod insulating layers. And uh, OK, so uh, we have a spin liquid insulator and 11% whole doped mod insulator. And uh, additional in this interesting point of this material is that T prime over T is unity. So, Nearly triangularis we, you, you, we have. So we have two nearly triangularis materials. One is confirmed spin liquid to be a spin liquid. And the other one is a doped material. This is the metal. So let's uh, compare the magnetism and the conductivity of the two materials. It's a very striking. OK, uh, this is the scaled susceptibility as a function of temperature and then j multiplied by uh, the spin susceptibility multiplied by j. And uh, blue uh, symbols uh, are the data susceptibility of the spin liquid insulators. And red uh, symbols is a 11% hold up spin liquid. Nearly the same. So this means two materials uh, show exactly the same behaviors in spin sector. 
However, uh, let's take a look at the inset, the resistivities. And the spin liquid materials is insulated, good insulated. However, doped spin liquid shows good metal. And in reality, uh, this metal metric behavior is uh, non film liquid like, T linear. Yes. So, um, in charge sector, the behavior is completely different. It's an insulator and metal. However, in a spin sector, exactly the same, nearly exactly the same. This is the clear manifestation of the spin charge separation. Okay. So, uh, even in a metallic state, in a spin sector, spin degrees behave, spin behaves like spin liquid. So, uh, that's why we say uh, that we have a uh, doped spin liquid. Uh, this is uh, uh, very recent data, unpublished. And uh, this is the pressure experiments of the whole coefficient as a function of pressure. Okay. And yeah, please take a look at the low temperature data, a whole coefficient, yeah, like this. And uh, the, at the low pressure, at low pressure, the whole coefficient is very high. It, this means that it's very small uh, carrier. And at, but at high temperatures, the whole coefficient is decreasing and, and very low value at high pressures. And some crossover occurs around 0.5 GPA. So this is the cartoon. At low pressures, the mobile charge are very small, low density, carrier density is low, but at high temperatures, it's many, many carriers. So uh, we see, speculate this is a, a, a sort of a mode transition. Uh, double occupancy is uh, prohibited and allowed, uh, uh, crudely speaking. So in these high temperature regions, all of the electrons uh, participate in the conduction and then contribute to the filmy surface, the large filmy surface here. But at low pressures, only a small portion of the electrons contribute to the carriers. Uh, probably the doped holes. So it's a hole on and other sites are occupied, uh, accommodated by the spinons. Is here. So uh, in these regions, the, this spin, maybe the spinon, uh, behave like a spin liquid, uh, as in the spin liquid insulators. And this doped hole is a mobile, it contributes to the conductivity, high conductivity. So in high temperature regions, it's a conventional correlated metal, but in the low temperature region, it's a doped spin liquid, doped water insulators. And uh, the temperature dependence is very interesting. Uh, this is the exponent temperature, pressure. At high temperatures, the uh, exponent of resistivity is 2. It's a film liquid. But in these regions, 1, non-film liquid. So this is a non-film liquid. This is a film liquid. There are clear correspondence. OK, I, I skip the time is limited. So one uh, interesting point. Uh, this shows superconductivities as a function of pressure. And uh, the, interestingly, the TC forms a dome and uh, the maximum occurs around 0.5 GPA. Roughly saying, roughly occurs here. Maybe 0.4 or something like this. Uh, Around this pressures, TC may be maximized. Okay, um, this is the uh, 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 resistivity measurements under pressure. And for example, you see uh, the magnetic field and resistivities. At low magnetic field, uh, it's superconducting and resistivity is vanishing. However, magnetic field kills the superconductivity and gradu gradually. Uh, changing. And the magnetic fields are applied perpendicular to the layers. And this material is strongly two-dimensional. So in these situations, namely under the perpendicular magnetic field, the uh, vortex liquid like states occur. So uh, this uh, intermediate uh, resistivity range, the superconductivity and, and, and normal states, uh, are, are kind of normal states, are mixed and fluctuating in the, in the, in the form of the vortex liquid state. And then nearly normal state appears, uh, is recovered at high magnetic field. And this is a color plot of the resistivities. 
In the low temperature region and the doped spin liquid region, it's a normal state here. And the blue color uh, roughly shows, indicates that the vanishing resistivity. So, vanishing resistivity here and normal state. The changing, change from the zero resistivity to the normal state resistivity is gradual. No clear cut, the clear boundaries. But however, if you apply uh, pressure further, uh, for example, at the boundary, it's a, this uh, zero resistivity region is extended and normal state here. And at high temperature regions, uh, and, and in these regions, uh, the conventional highly collated metal is realized. In this case, the transition from the superconducting state in the normal state is very clear, very sharp. It's a conventional behavior. So, in such a case, uh, it's not so uh, straightforward to determine the upper critical field. Upper critical field means um, uh, uh, characterizes the, the, the uh, magnetic field uh, and which kills the superconductivity. But we determine, uh, define the critical field, and this, uh, the resistivity, 80% recovered uh, the point. And from the upper critical field, we could determine the coherence length. Uh, the coherence length is, roughly speaking, is a characterizes the scale of the Cooper pairs, roughly speaking. Okay? So please take a look at this one. And this uh, purple curve is, uh, is, uh, 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 indicates the rough estimate of the inter Cooper pair distance. Okay? Uh, at high pressures, the high pressure regions, we assume that all of the electrons uh, participate in the superconducting state. In these regions, coherence length uh, is much, much larger than the inter-Kuiper inter pair distance. This means that in these regions, Kuiper pairs are overlapping, many, many overlapping, in the BCS state, BCS-like state. But in this uh, doped spin liquid regions, coherence length is diminished, and the Inter, the Cooper pair distance, average the distance, is increased and nearly the same. So overlapping is small. So I think that uh, in these materials, uh, as a function pressure, uh, the BCS to BCS crossover occurs. It's, uh, this is an uh, additional interesting aspect of this uh, doped spin liquid or uh, superconductor. Yes? So can we go to the previous? Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a very uh, in, in, yeah, important point. Um, we uh, uh, measure the superconducting, superconductivity by AC susceptibility measurements. But in these regions, superconductivity is not complete. Uh, no, not, uh, maybe at ambient pressure, the fraction of a superconducting volume may be 30% or something like this. But I, I don't know. I'm not sure about the reason. However, uh, under pressure, the superconducting volume fraction uh, becomes full, 100%. So this inhomogeneity, maybe I think the intrinsic property, I think. If the sub system is dirty, uh, the such a fractional superconducting volume, so, so uh, incomplete superconducting volume fraction, superconductivity is maintained even at high temperature, but high pressures. But in a case, at high pressures, it's a superconductor is very, very clean. So I think uh, in these regions, I'm not sure about the, the origin of the inhomogeneity. Is it a tunnel? Like, uh, or the... Ah, but this, the characterization was made in, at, at, at zero magnetic field. So FFU, FFLO appears in the high magnetic field. FFU mean FFLO, fluid FFLO. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I don't know, but, uh, but the inhomogeneity is absolutely different from the FFL because the state is, uh, uh, the superconductivity is characterized by the, a very small magnetic field. But, so, um, sorry? P 
Uh -huh. PDW. Oh, is upper upper critical field, yeah. So, but the yeah, um, yes. So, at, in this inhomogeneous regions, we did not determine the coherence things. Uh, we determined the coherence things in the homogeneous regions. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe remaining uh, five or minutes or so. So, okay, skipping the. Superconductivity, but uh, I'd like to show you um, a different taste of physics uh, in, orga in organic materials. Is a uh, okay. This one, the optional material, massless uh, chromians, is related to topological <laughs> stuff. So, uh, that is a subject of this uh, lecture. Maybe maybe ten minutes. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, the material is this. Uh, it's, uh, it's like this. Um, again, uh, layered structures, uh, seemingly similar to the copper type materials, but the uh, difference is in the in plane uh, molecular arrangement. Uh, the copper type material has a dimeric uh, molecular arrangements. Dimer forms two dimensional uh, layers. So, dimer uh, carries one hole. So effectively, half field is realized. But in this case, no dimer, no dimeric. So this means the band filling is a quarter. And the unit cell contains four molecules, and A, A, B, C. A and two A molecules are equivalent, but B, C is non-equivalent. And this is a phase diagram. At the ambient pressure, uh, this material shows a charge order uh, at 100. 35 kelvins, and uh, under pressure, this uh, charge order uh, temperature is decreased. And then, above uh, 12 kilobar, uh, Dirac fermion phase, uh, Dirac phase appears. Okay, um, I'd like to show you the, the interaction effects. Okay, um, this phase diagram uh, suggests this, the Dirac state is strongly correlated because the charge ordered state is enabling. So, I think uh, in this organic materials, uh, you have strongly correlated massless struck electrons. And uh, in the remaining time, I'd like to show you two uh, experimental indications. Uh, one is the anisotropic cone reshaping due to the long-range Coulomb interactions. And the other one is the ferrimagnetic polarizations, very curious behaviors and due to the short range equivalent interactions. Okay, this is a comparison of the, uh, the very well known graphene and uh, this material. And in the graphene, in the, in the air space, is a honeycomb lattice, very, very highly symmetric. And reflecting this uh, symmetry, uh, and even in the K space, the uh, Dirac cone is symmetrical, and Dirac points is located on the very special point of the boundary in the K space. However, uh, in the organic materials, this is band structure calculations. And unit cell contains four molecules, so the band uh, contains four, or uh, band structure contains four band. And Fermi level is fixed here, because uh, this is a quarter field, three quarter field. And you see, this is the expansion of this, uh, the, 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 the profile of the uh, dispersion uh, around the Fermi level. Fermi over here. So tilted cone, seriously tilted cone, the cone is uh, suggested, predicted. And the, film, the ratio of the film velocity is one order different. Precisely speaking, the eight times different. Okay, and the transport measurements uh, confirm that the, the drug, uh, massless drug fermions are there in these materials. And an uh, interesting point in the massless drug fermions is the Effect of the cooling interactions in conventional materials, uh, conventional metals with uh, Fermi surface, in that case, many, many electrons. So, cooling interaction is screened, and short range cooling interactions uh, gives a uh, mass renormalization or Fermi velocity uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, suppressed and density of states enhanced. 
However, in the Dirac chromium state, it's, uh, the, the oxygen density is very, very small or vanishing at low temperatures. So long-range cooling interactions is unscreened. So the long-range cooling interaction plays a vital role, main vital role in masses Dirac chromium phase. Okay, uh, the long time ago, because of predicted in such a situations that the thermal velocity is renormalized, and like this logarithmic uh, renormalization, um, it means that the this means that the uh, if the cone is like this, uh, because of predi predicted. The, this logarithmic correction means that the, uh, if the energy scale is diminished and diminished, in that case, this film velocity is sharp and sharp. And this, one. this is logarithmic corrections. Whether this uh, situation occurs uh, or not in real materials uh, is a very, very uh, important and interesting uh, issue. And uh, in graphene, uh, by transport measurements, uh, this prediction was uh, demonstrated like this. And uh, our first aim uh, to do uh, uh, this uh, experiments is to confirm the Dirac cone reshaping in tilted uh, cone case. And uh, this material and this the material has a very, very interesting uh, properties. Um, this is the band structure calculation. Uh, the calculated band Dirac cone. And uh, this color is uh, the amplitude of the molecular orbitals of each molecular orbitals in Dirac cone. Now, for example, the B molecule, this molecular orbital contributes to the this steepest part of the cones. However, in the, the gentle part, there is no contributions. So if you know spin susceptibility of the B molecule, you know the spin susceptibility in the steepest spot. But interestingly, the C molecule, C orbital, uh, contributes to the buffer state to the, the, this gentle part. So the reverse opposite situations. But this C molecule orbital does not show sizable, non-sizable contribution to the gentle part. So if we uh, do the site-selective carbon-13 NMR, uh, which probes the electronic state uh, separately at each molecular site, we can know the local spin susceptibility here and here. And anyway, uh, if the uh, cone is preserved uh, in such a shape. The density of states is uh, like this. Um, oh no. Okay. Mm -hmm. At zero temperatures, it's uh, this density of states fully occupied. But in KBT, at finite temperatures, in KBT, it's a particle uh, excited. And the average density of states contributes to the spin susceptibilities. So the temperature dependence of the spin susceptibility should be linear in these situations. Okay? That is the first point. There is a result. And we uh, successfully uh, probed that the local spin susceptibilities uh, at C molecule, A molecule, and this is B molecule, B molecule. And this is the spin susceptibilities and this gentle plot of the cone. And uh, this uh, B site probes the steepest plot. Okay, and A, A sees the average and average. So uh, now please neglect this A, uh, A site. Please take a look at the 
B and C, particularly. And uh, this is the boundary structure calculations. Uh, density of states is a, it's a linear. So in such a case, uh, you expect that the linear temperature dependence of the spin stability at each site. But what we observed is a nonlinear behavior, completely different. And this is the uh, clear manifestations. In real materials, cone is not like this. It's a kind of the sharpening occurs, as predicted by Abikasov. So uh, our students uh, perform the uh, linearization group uh, calculations. Um, this is the tilted uh, wild uh, equations. Um, and a slopic case that is only these terms are there, but this omega 0 and Q uh, describes the tilting. And this Vx and Vy is uh, renormalized by long range crew interactions. And uh, he calculated the one loop and in the large n expansion uh, uh, lesions. And this is the, uh, the RG equations. And they uh, obtained the result. Uh, it's uh, this uh, colored curve, red curve, blue curve, and green curve is a result uh, of the linearization group calculations. And um, Vx and Vy, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's linearized like this. It's a gamma over Q. Q is a, a wave vector in the first brillion zone. So Q is uh, approaching the zero, or uh, means that energy is decreasing and decreasing, decreasing. So the velocity is increasing logarithmically. Yeah? And this cone is a, a result uh, which fits uh, to the experimental data like this here. So we conclude that uh, this uh, transparent uh, gray uh, cone is uh, the band structure calculations. However, in reality, the, uh, the real cone is like this. So this cone is reshaping uh, due to the long-range cooling interactions. But uh, you see, there is a serious, uh, very sizable discrepancy between this uh, renormalization calculations and the experimental data. As for B site, A, C is OK. This is a, uh, a non-negligible uh, difference. What is the origin of this? And my colleague uh, calculated the, uh, uh, OK, before that, uh, let's take a look at the data more closely. Um, please take a look at the data, data here. OK, this data. And this is the experimental data uh, uh, for the B site. And this is the RG calculations, the large difference. RG calculation cannot explain the behaviors. And this is the uh, comparison of the experimental data for A, B, and C sites. A and C sites shows a very normal behavior, but only B site has negative values. It's a negative spin susceptibility is very, very curious because this is a paramagnetic state, no magnetic ordered states. It's a paramagnetic state. This means that you are a paramagnetic field. And this is a paramagnetic state. So conventionally, all, the, all of the spins are up on average uh, the moment uh, aligned to the magnetic field. But this uh, experiment suggests that only B side spin aligned in the opposite directions. Uh, it's very curious. This is a cartoon uh, that shows the experimental data. Uh, applied magnetic field here, the A spin and the C spin here, but the, only the B spins are differently. This is not ordered. This is field induced. Okay, so such a fairly magnetic spin uh, coordination uh, organization uh, induced by magnetic field, and this uh, behavior is completely rep rep reproduced by the Hubble model, uh, a mean field calculation of the Hubble model. So U is increased only the, only on the B side for at the. Only at the B side, the spin stability is negative, and such a situation occurs. 
And this is the, the, the cone is tilted. Okay? And A side and B side shows uh, a conventional behavior, but only the B side is, shows uh, strange behaviors. So this fairly magnetic spin polarization is due to the cooler interact short range cooler interactions. So um, and organic uh, massless direct electrons with tilted cones, uh, there are two important effects. One is the long range cooler interaction effects and short range cooler interaction effects. That is reasonable because uh, as I said, the uh, charge carrier is vanishingly small at low temperatures, so long-range cooler interaction is, is not screened. And on the other hand, the charge ordered state is neighboring. So short-range order, short-range cooler interactions are equally important with materials. Okay, I ten minutes over. <laughs> okay. For the material you're, you're showing that has superconductivity, yeah. does that material have the, the Dirac? Uh, no, no, different one. Different, different. different one. What is the material component again? For the this one, Dirac uh, Alpha ET2 I3 is a different one. Oh, is that on the slide? I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can check it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, uh, what's the. This one. Do we know whether they're. Oh, yeah. Still recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much.